We all love a pizza, right? I do. And I don't know if it's just me. Probably is just me. But supermarket bought pizzas never quite hit the spot in the same way that a restaurant pizza does or one from a well-known takeaway. Thinking back, when I was a kid, pizza was still a massive treat. It wasn't something that you ate all that often. I remember my seventh birthday party, I went to the Deep Pan Pizza Company. That place doesn't even exist anymore. What I loved most of all was the base. It was soft and doughy, but crunchy and unctuous from all the oil in the pan that had been used to cook the thing. It almost turned the dough into like fried bread. And for those of you who don't know what fried bread is, it's an accompaniment to a great British fry up. It's basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a piece of bread that's fried in oil or lard. Tons of cholesterol, almost guaranteed heart attack. D Delicious. The Deep Pan Pizza Company closed its doors years ago, and I guess the closest you get now is the Deep Pan Pizza that you get at Pizza Hut. But even they're closed right now. So given we're in the third national lockdown in the space of a year, given that restaurants aren't open, and I live so far in the countryside that delivery companies won't deliver this far, I thought I'd reopen Lockdown Kitchen and I'd start with my never fail pizza dough recipe and crucially the method by which you can cook both a thin crust pizza and a deep pan pizza at home. It's one for the kids, it's great fun, it's super easy, let's get into it. You're gonna need one kilo of flour, plain flour is fine but I'm using bread flour. Olive oil, of course you do, pizza's Italian. Yeast, I'm using dried active. Salt and sugar, golden caster or caster, whatever you got really. Semolina is the best non-stick substance you can get. If you can't find it, flour will do. The sauce is all about personal choice. My favorite is a Pizza Express Passata, but this carton was all I had in the cupboard. Cheese, now the trick for the deep pan pizza is you want the cheese to have as little water content as possible. You want this rubbery stuff. Again, I couldn't find a block, so I've got the pre-grated stuff and it's perfect. And that's about it. Oh, and some sunflower oil if you're making a deep pan pizza. On to the method. Weigh out 14 grams of the yeast. Add a teaspoon of sugar, 650 ml of water, stir and give it about 5 minutes to do its thing. Mmm, yum. Now the flour. Sieve the whole lot onto the work surface. You want a nice big space because this gets messy. And this is why it's great fun to do with the kids. You want it to look basically like a volcano. All there? Great, but that looks like a mountain. Make an indent in the middle with your fingers. Salt, half a teaspoon, don't go nuts. Now your yeasty water's gone bubbly and murky, it's time for the fun bit. Pouring a little at a time, make a well in the volcano of flour and use the fork to gently and gradually pull the flour in from the sides. Once the gloopy ball gets a bit dry, add some more. And just keep going. Yes, it's going to get messy and that's why the kids love it. The walls will collapse, the water will run everywhere, but just mop it up with the flour. And when the dough ball is that large, just go at it with your hands and start kneading. Something to do with stretching the glutens or something. Anyway, don't go completely crazy. Just get it into a nice, smooth ball, and then wipe the side clean. Grab a large mixing bowl, give it a good glug of olive oil. Chuck the dough in and make sure it's covered in the oil. Whack some cling film over the top, chuck it in the airing cupboard or a warm dark room for 45 minutes, grab a glass of wine and chill. On to the cooking, and we're going to start with the thin crust pizza. You can use a baking tray or a pizza stone, whatever you've got, but the key here is temperature. You want your oven as hot as it'll go. Fan 230 and get whatever you're cooking your pizza on in the oven and up to temp. After 45 minutes to an hour of proving, your dough should have doubled in size and looked like this. Flour on the work surface, dough down and work some of the air out, but not too much. 
I like a decent amount of dough, so I'm using about a quarter of the dough for each pizza. Cut it in half. And then half again. For the thin crust, you want the dough to be relatively dry, so you can use a bit more flour as you work it into a pizza base shape about the size of a dinner plate. Now carefully take your baking sheet or pizza stone out of the oven and put it on a heat resistant part of the work surface. It's going to be damn hot so keep the kids clear. This is where the semolina comes in, you want to apply it liberally to the surface. If you're using the flour, that'll be fine too. Then lift your base directly onto the heated stone, it'll start cooking straight away. Then get the kids involved, sauce all over, then toppings. For the thin crust, regular proper mozzarella is fine, we're using both back in the fan oven at 2.30 until the cheese has melted to your liking. And that's that. Gorgeous! Right, onto the deep pan pizza. For this, you're going to need a pan. If you have a heavy duty cast iron pan, fantastic. If not, no worries. I'm just using a standard non-stick large frying pan. It's a two-part cooking process which involves the grill, or broiler as I think the Americans call it. Turn it on to max. In your pan, you want some oil the sunflower oil or some of the olive oil. I prefer not to use olive oil because it's got quite a strong flavour. Season it lightly. Don't go throwing loads of salt in there because it's going to taste awful. Then a bit of the semolina. Rub it around the edges, get it all covered. Then it's time for the dough. You want it to be wetter than for the thin crust dough, so don't worry with the extra flour. You can then either plop it in the middle and work it to the sides or work it outside the pan until it's the right size and drop it in. If you want it super fluffy, cover and give it some more time to rise a bit more. Then it's onto the hob, medium high heat for 8 or 9 minutes until the base is browned. You'll notice the dough start to bubble, that's totally fine, it's just the steam underneath the pizza base trying to get out. Check underneath, if it's all brown, great. Off the heat and add your sauce. Then it's time for the cheese. Take this straight from the fridge, it has to be cold. Apply it liberally. With this you want to go all the way to the edge so it'll crisp up with the oil and give you those lovely brown bits. Whack it under the grill and wait until that cheese is ready. Take it out from under the grill, remembering that that handle is going to be hot. Slide it out of the pan and onto a cooling rack for a minute or so just to let it crunch up. Slice and enjoy. See, I told you it was easy. Never fail pizza dough cooked for thin crust or deep pan. Mm.